23rd of October 2024. Uh, it's just starting. Please, wherever you are, let's bow down our head and pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Father, teach us your word. They will not see flesh, they will not hear flesh. Father, use me as the vessel on this altar. Let your people, let us hear your word and let your word come powerfully and minister to us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the Lord. Yes, today is uh, digging deep. Uh, I touch you my message as uh, steps to greatness. Um, before I start, I would like to introduce and say that uh, in Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Lord has told us that the beginning of greatness have started in our midst and 
we shall experience it even in our lifetime in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to anchor my references to Abraham, the father of faith, because he is the pattern man. We always think that uh, Abraham's blessings are mine. But the question is that what has Abraham done that we are, we are imbibing or we are doing or we want to do as we go through this message, the Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. First of all, um, what is greatness? Greatness can be defined as something that is outside the ordinary, something bigger than what one can expect, something that is extraordinary. For instance, our God is great. He does great things. And God, in his greatness and his mightiness, he wants his children also to be great. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, we're going to look at the very different steps in this uh, message, in which I entitled God's Desire for Your Life. God desires that none of us should suffer. None of us should experience any form of uh, illness. We should have peace. We should enjoy the world to its fullness. But as much as he has promised us the goodness and the greatness of this present world before we be with him in eternity, there are certain things that he expects from us. Praise the Lord. Now, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. God's desire for your life. That is the subtitle. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, the, taken from the NIV version, it says, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. This is the word of God to Abraham. He called Abraham, we all know the story, from his father's house, from his kindred. And he called, it, called him into himself, and he told that I'm going to make you, that is the first promise he made to Abraham, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. And we know that the word of God can never return to him void. And whenever God speaks, his word prospers wherever he sends the word to. Praise the Lord. Now, if we look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 13, the Bible says, And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandment of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. Taken from the KGV version. God wants us to always be at the top. God wants his children to always be, be leaders, to be at leadership position because he is the almighty God. He created us and he, 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 he brought us to himself. So we cannot be ordinary. So we, cannot, we should not see ourselves as ordinary beings because we have a, a God who is our Father, who loves us, who has promised us. So any time you are feeling, you are having a complex, or maybe you are, not, you are not where you are supposed to be, have it at the back of your mind that God has your backing and he has promised you and he is going to make sure that you get to the top. Praise the Lord. Then when we look at uh, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, taken from the KGV version, the Bible says, For I know the thought that I think toward you, say the Lord, 
thought of peace and not evil to give you an expected end. What is that expected end? A better life. An end of joy, peace, happiness, tranquility, success, all round about. That is the thought he has for you and me. So if there's any other ministration outside this, that is not from God. God loves his children. He loves you. He loves me. So that should be a motivation for us. That will be a kind of a catalyst for us to come to strive. Even though you have not got into the position that you are looking for, believe that you get there. Because the one that have called you is engineering something in your life. Praise the Lord. Now we are going to look at uh, the second chapter. Because of our time, we have other uh, Bible passages that I will enjoin you to read in your own closet so that we can save time. You can look at Todd John 2. Todd John 2. Then we have Psalm 91, verse 14. We also have Isaiah 58, verse 14. Then we have Daniel chapter 12, verse 13. Then Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 19. All they are all promises of God. But because of our time, we are not going to go into that detail. Because this is not an academic exercise. This is just this is a spiritual exercise that will enrich our, our soul and our spirit. Now, what is the next subtext? I entitle it, He calls you to a life of separation. He calls you and me to a life of separation. Because God is holy and he beholds no iniquity. God is light. God does not dwell in anything that does not glorify him. God has no iniquity in him, so he cannot behold iniquity. So if God promises you and is calling you, he wants to, you to be the best that you can be. He say, be holy, that I that called you, I'm holy. Praise the Lord. So let's look at Exodus 33, verse 16. And what is the Bible telling us? The Bible says, then the Lord said to Moses, Leave this place, you and the people you brought up out of Egypt, and go up to the land I promise on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give thee to your descendant. Praise the Lord. You know, we know the story of Moses and how God delivered the children of Israel from the land of bondage to the land of promise. But of course, after he, the, he parted the Red Sea and they crossed over from the other side on the journey to the promised land, he separated them. He said that, be separated. Be separated unto me that the land that I promise your forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that I'm going to give to you. Because he said, I made that promise on oath. God made the promise on oath, and God, God honors his word than his name. He has said it, he will perform it. Praise the Lord. So, he, is, he told the children of Israel that as I'm, I've brought you out to be my children, and I will be your God, there are certain things that I expect from you. You have to separate yourself unto me. You have to follow my precept. You have to follow my laws. And then with that, we can do business. Praise the Lord. Sec uh, let's look at Joshua 23, verse 7. On, still on, the, on, on, on the issue of uh, being separate, a life of separation. The Bible says, do not associate with these nations that remain among you. Do not invoke the names of their gods or swear by them. You must not serve them or bow down to them. 
what it means is that after the children of Israel have crossed the Red Sea and they are now joining to their, <coughs> excuse me, their promised land, there are so many, many nations that they have encountered war and God has dealt with them on their behalf, get, get them to clear the way and as they are going, they are meeting different, different nations that they are hidden. They don't serve God. They don't know God. They, don't, they are not the children of God. God did not call them. But God is warning them that they should not mix up with them. They should not have anything to do with their tradition. They should not bow down to their God. They should not even eat their food. They should not do a lot of things. They should, so that they will not be polluted. Because by the time they begin to mix with them, associate with them with their custom, the tendency is for them to derail. The tendency is for the children of Israel to lose focus, to be distracted, and to now, their heart will now be turned to other gods. So God start warning them, God start telling them that this is the way I want you to pattern your life, even as I follow you, as I lead you to the promised land. Praise the Lord. Let's look at Nehemiah Chapter 10, verse 30. The Bible says, We will not give our daughters as wives to the people of the land, nor take their daughters for our sons. This is uh, Nehemiah speaking, because what this passage is talking about is that by the time you are engaging on intermarriage, with somebody that has nothing to do with you, definitely you are already diluting that soundness, that purity that you have with God. And God doesn't like that. And what this message is actually saying is that, look, for those people who are one leg in God, one leg outside, what I want you to know is that as far as God is concerned, there is no 99.9% loyalty to him. It's either you are with him or you are not with him. So if God is calling you to get yourself separated, what he's telling you is that you must be 100% loyal to him. If you are, not, if you are, once, if you are playing game with God, it will be very dangerous because the devil knows that you are his. And God knows that you are not him. If God wants to call you to himself, he wants 100% devotion, attention, focus, and loyalty. Praise the Lord. And quickly, let's look at the book of Ephesians, still on separation. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11 to 14. I take it from NKJV, New King James Version. And the Bible says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them, for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Therefore, he says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. This is Apostle Paul uh, speaking to the people of uh, in the, uh, uh, Ephesians that you should not involve in unfruitful work of darkness. Unfruitful, unfruitful work of darkness, there are so many. We cannot begin to list them. We just talk about adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, covetousness, a lot of things that you should not be found to be doing it. That certain things are even very shameful to even begin to mention it. And in some instances, Apostle Paul is even saying that even the hiddens, the things that the, the people who call themselves children of God are even doing in the days of the Apostle, that even the hiddens those who don't even follow Christ, those things are not even found among them. Then if you say you are a follower of Christ, why them 
do you begin to do things that even the unbelievers will not do? These are the unfruitful works of darkness. Praise the Lord. We are still talking about separation. Separations come with a price. The greatness we are talking about here, don't forget that the topic is steps to greatness. We are talking about greatness with God. Don't look at the greatness in terms of the standard of the world. We are talking about the standard that God has given out. That is the greatness. We have a lot of great people, a lot of great people by the world standard that they are not in Christ. So we are not measuring that type of greatness as our own roadmap to greatness. We are, we are looking up to the greatness that God will give to us because his own precept is the one that is best for us. The Bible says that a way seemed right to a man, but the end is destruction. If God is aligning with you and ordering your step to the greatness that he has for you, be rest assured that the end of that journey with God will be peace. And that will be our testimony in Jesus' name. Now let's look at further examples. That is examples of those who, comp who complied and the results. We have several examples of people who, has, who have worked with God, who have hacked to his word, and are very devoted and are doing what pleases God. And we know how their story ends. They end well. And that is why the Bible records them for us to learn from them and then we we'll pattern our life towards their own example because God is not a respecter of man. If God has done for those who are before us because they follow his footstep and it end well with them, so shall it be for us because it's all about God has never changed. If you are with him and you are doing what he says, he will give to you what he has given to those who actually follow his commandment. Praise the Lord. Let's take the example of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 1, verse 8, King James Version. And the Bible says, But Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the, with the wine which he, he, drink, he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuch that he might not defile himself. Praise the Lord. Daniel is one example of somebody, even though he was taken as slave from his land to a foreign land, he purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. And that is what I want to lay some emphasis here. You see, you have a will. And I'm telling us that you have a very strong will. And you can exercise your will. And there's no demon in hell. Even the devil himself cannot force you to do something against your will. And that is why even God himself respects your will. He said, I present to you life and death, but choose life. God will not impose himself. He just gave his man one. It's left for you to take it or you leave it. But if you don't follow the manual of God, which is his commandment, the end will not be good. And that will not be a portion in Jesus' name. What did Daniel say? When Daniel saw what was happening in the strange land, Daniel noticed that everything that they do, both they are drinking and they are eating, they have to use it as a, to sacrifice to, to their God, which is not the God that he knows, which is not the God of Israel. Then he told himself that 
I will not defile myself by eating this food, by drinking anything. And he told those who are serving those food and drink that they should know that these things that they are preparing, I'm not going to be a partaker of it. And that is what God expects from us. In our contemporary life, if you find yourself in anywhere that will make you to compromise, you should be intentional that nobody will make you to defile yourself, even though you are in the midst of those who are doing things, ab uh, abominable things. Because you have a strong will. God gave us that will. And that if you, if you exercise that will, there's nothing you cannot accomplish if you are in Christ. And you say, for the sake of Christ, being born again, this thing I will not do. But the problem is, a lot of people are not getting that message. They feel that they can compromise a little, do something a little, do this, do that. No, no, no. You have to be determined that I will be righteous. Because God says that uh, with, with man, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. When people are saying that it's not possible to be perfect, it is possible to be perfect. You can track your activity. By the time you are honest enough and you cry to God to help you, God will fill you up. The Bible says that blessed are those that are hungered after righteousness that they shall be filled. And that will be a portion in Jesus' name. Look at Daniel chapter 3, verse 15 to 16 again. And let's see what we're saying. Now, if you are ready at the time, you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, dulcima, and all kinds of music to fall down and worship the image which I have made. Very good. But if you do not worship, you shall be thrown at once into the midst of a, a furnace of blazing fire. And what good is there? Who can rescue you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Answer the king. O Nebuchadnezzar, we do, not, we do not need to answer you on this. This is, this is the story of the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We all know the story. We don't need to overflog it. He commanded that we know the plotting that brought them to this stage. How the people plotted against them and now went and reported them that they don't want to serve the God of Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar, if you do not bow down to my God, I'm going to deal with you. I'm going to throw you into the foreign finance. We know the story, how it ended. And what did they say? They say, we are not going to bow down to your God. If we perish, we perish. Even if our God refused to deliver us, we are not going to bow down. That is how to resolve in your heart. That is how to be intentional. That is how to be purposeful in your heart that this, I will not do it. This is the type of people that God is looking for. If you want God to come down for you, to fight for you, be rest assured that if you, you defy the odd, even at the point of death, that for you to compromise and to sin against your God, you will not do it. You will be surprised how God will appear to you in that situation. And we, are, we have several testimonies of how God has come down for people when they least expected, when they thought that all hope is lost. But because they have glorified God in a place where others are falling or failing, God do come down for them. Praise the Lord. Now, let's look at uh, Genesis 24, verse 35. Genesis 24, verse 35. The Bible says, And the Lord had blessed my master greatly, and he become great. And he had given him flocks and heads and silver and gold and men servant and maid servant and camels and asses. This is talking about Abraham. Abraham was very successful. Abraham has, 
has, has everything. God bless Abraham bountifully. So God is God of increase. If you are serving God, be patient with him. Don't give him timeline. Don't tell him that so so time, if you don't do this, I will decline. It's like trying to hold God to ransom. God don't owe you anything. You are serving God because you love him. You are not serving him because it is a kind of a, a maybe you try to say it, uh, a two-way traffic. If I serve you, you give me that. No, no, no. He created us for the purpose of serving him for his own pleasure. Praise the Lord. Now let's look at the laws of increase. The laws of increase. When we talk of the laws of increase, we are talking about, remember we are talking about the standard of God, not the standard of man or the standard of the world. God is a God of increase and there are laws that he has put aside that by the time you, you follow those laws, you will see the manifestation of those increase in your life and in my life. The children of Israel were, fruit, were fruitful and they increased. The following principles will also help us to be fruitful and increase. There are certain principles that we are going to look at this night to see if you are able to follow those principles, we are going to see the manifestation of God in our life in terms of his promises. One, improve yourself daily. Uh, let's look at uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. I take my Bible reading from the NIV. And the Bible says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. This is Apostle Paul that is talking. He said he has not yet get to that point. Because at, to, at, at the end of Apostle Paul's life, he said that I fought the good fight of faith. But before getting to that point, this is what he's saying. At the early stage of his ministry, that he's striving. He hasn't gotten hold of where he wants to be in terms of serving God. He hasn't actually done enough that he will feel contented in his heart that he has served the Lord. But he is still pressing forward, not forgetting everything that is behind. Tomorrow is gone. You have to look forward. You have to press. Remember the Bible said that the kingdom of, the kingdom of God suffered violence and only the violent takes it by force. You have to press into it. You have to press. God don't, God don't just deliver you uh, blessings on a platter of gold. We are called laborers with Christ. God wants you to actually be a partaker in his creation. So you have to press. You have to fight the good fight of faith. You don't have to be a lukewarm. You have to look at what you ask yourself. Lord, what do you want me to do for you? Where do you want me to go? Think outside the box what you want to contribute. It doesn't have to be about money. It has, it, it, it has, money is just one aspect of it. But there are so many things you can do with your talent, with the brain that God has given to you, with your education, with your skill. There's a lot of things. For instance, I take myself as an example. I, in my place of work, I do salesmanship, and I have a lot of clients. And I do the work of God side by side with my secular job. What do I mean? I do pray for my client. They know me. They called me. Uh, two days ago, I was in the Methodist hospital. I have, I have a prospect that I was trying to prospect and I have not been able to, even to, able to get the business. But when I called her, she said she's in the hospital. I just told her, give me the address of the hospital. She gave me the address. I diverted my, my movement. I went straight to the hospital. I always, in my car, I always go about with anointing oil and the mantle from Redeemed Church, from the camp in Nigeria. 
So I do, I pray. I'm not the one that is doing it. It's the Lord that is doing it. But God needed a vessel that he will use. This is still part of serving God. So in any capacity that you find yourself, you can always be the light that will shine in that, envir in that environment. Praise the Lord. We are still in the law of increase. The second one is never neglect an opportunity. Let's look at Joshua chapter 2, verse 1. Uh, let's, let, let's look at Galatians, sorry, uh, chapter 6, verse 9. And the Bible says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap. If we faint not, as we have therefore opportunity, let us, let us do good unto all. Praise the Lord. If never neglect an opportunity. If, if there is an opportunity for you to do the, the, the will of God, there are so many opportunities, a lot of opportunities. We should not be tired of trying to do good because this is the heartbeat of God, doing good to humanity in so many ways. If uh, the Bible says if somebody who is in need comes to you and you have the capacity to, to do it unto the person, do not tell the person to go back. Always look for an opportunity to do good. Always look for opportunity to be able to make humanity to feel your impact. That is why we are the children of God. And that is why we are the children of light. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The third one is commit yourself to a worthy goal. Commit yourself to a worthy goal. You have 24 hours a day. And you have the opportunity to be able to appropriate your time into different, different things. Do things, especially the things of God. Jesus Christ said that we should not build our treasure on earth where robbers will break in, moat will eat it. Build your treasures in heaven where no man can go in and break it. But wherever the, a, a, a man's treasure is, that is why his heart is. So commit yourself to a worthy cause. What the Bible say in Philippians chapter 1, verse 20. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body. Paul is saying that he is always looking for a way to always do things that will glorify God. Let all our thinking, our way of life, the Bible says, let your light, your light so shine that people will see and glorify your God. Your, your, your God. Let your light so shine. How does your light shine? By, 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 by being different. That people around you, people will begin to notice you. That this person is, is separate. Even the Bible tells us that every idle world will be judged. So you might think that just talking doesn't mean anything. Talking matters. Because Jesus Christ said that what goes into a man does not defile a man, but what comes out, out of a man defiles him. So we should be mindful of what we say. We should not go and sit down with people who, who are not our kind in terms of people who are not regenerated, people who are not born again. Because the tendency for them, because evil communication, according to the Bible, corrupt good manners. If people see that you are righteous, you are doing the thing of God, when they are around you, they will be mindful of what they will speak because they know that you will not be part of that conversation. But if you are sitting down with unbelievers and you are following them to be talking whatever they are going to say, because they have, no, they have no restraining order. They have no red line to cross. But you know you have a red line to cross with God. You don't just open your mouth and talk anyhow. Because the Bible says that we should talk less, we should see more, and we should hear more, but we should breathe our tongue. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The, the next subtitle is Wrong with Your Vision. Wrong with Your Vision. Um, 
where there is no vision, the people perish. And uh, because of our time, uh, I'll quickly just explain it because we have actually uh, running out of time, but then I will do justice to some, some, some of them. Wrong with your vision. Let's look at uh, Proverbs 29, verse 18. The Bible says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. If you have a vision, run with it. Vision is a dream. Don't allow your dream to die. Always make sure that you keep it alive. And that is why God is calling you, encouraging you that he is with you. He is not going to forsake you. So if you have, if you have a dream, God will nurture it for you. And you say, run with your dream. Let's look at uh, Hebrew 2, verse 2 to 3. NIV version. The Bible says, For since the message spoken through angel was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard it. What the Bible is saying, what the Bible is, is saying is that the vision of God from the beginning, that those who have heard it, Christ brought the, the message, people listened to it, and if, if the angel that even brought the message first even before the coming of Christ, that anybody who is in disobedience will receive punishment. And now we have a salvation. Christ has come and has taken our sin away and he has given us a, 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 an open check that he said that in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheers because I, I have overcome the world. What does that tell you? Is that whatever thing you are going through, have it at the back of your mind that with Christ, you will overcome it. And that is something that should gladden the heart of the children of God. Praise the Lord. Number five, encourage and employ others to buy into your vision. If you have a vision, don't bury it in your heart. Most people, their dream dies because they are afraid that by the time they share the dream, people will hijack it. And you know, they say, if you are alone, you, 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 you go a long distance, but if you are going with a lot of people, it will make the distance to be more. By if you have, if you, if, if you, if you have uh, a vision and a God-given vision, you test run it and you see that, yes, this thing is tested and is something that is viable. Bring people in. Tell, tell, bring other people. Let other people be part of that dream so that the dream, the impact of that dream will can go around. We should not be selfish of whatever dream we have, but because we are afraid maybe some people will hijack it. Number six, accept responsibility for your life. Genesis uh, 3, verse 11 to 12. Genesis 3, verse 11 to 12. He's talking about uh, uh, Adam. When Adam ate the fruit and uh, God asked him, why did you do this? He never took responsibility. He was saying that is the woman that you gave to me. That is the one that gave me the fruit. That is trying to uh, deviate from the answer. And what does this one tell us? You should accept responsibility. Even the Bible says, whoever that covers his sin will not prosper. If, you, if we sin, we should be gracious enough, humble ourselves enough, take responsibility, go to God, cry to God, ask God for forgiveness with a contrite heart. That's how, with that, God will be gracious enough to forgive us. We should take responsibility for our action. Praise the Lord. Then, the next one is select your friends. Let's look at James 4, verse 4. 
The Bible says, Ye adulterers and adulteress, adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. In those days, when I just got born again, I was struggling with this verse because I didn't really understand what it means. That if you, are, if, if, you are, if you love the world, you are enmity with God, but later I now got the understanding that this is not the world that God designed. The system of the world is at variance with God. This is not the God. This is not the world that God has in mind. And the Bible is talking about adulterers and adulteresses. It's a metaphor. We know what adulterers, adultery mean by married people sleeping outside their matrimonial home. But this is just a metaphor. Why is it a metaphor? God is, God demands 100% loyalty. If you are with God, you stick with God. You cannot stick with God and stick with the world because there are so many decadence, there are so many things going in the world that is not pleasing to God. So if you say you are the child of God and you, are ple- you, are, you want to do things that will gladden the heart of God, you should shun the ways of the world. We are not saying that everything about the world is bad. But most things, especially, let's drive it home, especially entertainment. Let, let me be honest with you. Entertainment is one single thing that will lead a lot of people to hell. Even most Christians, if they don't repent, entertainment in this present world that we are is, is massaging the ego of the devil. Let's take, for instance, all these films that we, we watch. We watch a lot of films. We think that, uh, okay, I'm just relaxing, I'm relaxing. But you are getting, being, you, your, your spirit is being polluted because most of the films, the directors, the producers, they don't serve God and they have an agenda in order to pollute your spirit. What do I mean? Most of these films that people watch, you will see that there is a lot of promiscuity in the, in the film. Even now, they are, even pro, they, are, they are promoting men to men, women to women in the film. They want to normalize it. They want to make it a norm in the society. So such things as the children of God, we should shun it. By the time we start loving such things, doing a lot of things, which I wouldn't want to mention in terms of our time, you should, you should be able to... The Bible, the days, the Bible was written when there was no technology. But the, the manual has not changed. It's led for you to look at the word of God and now just to, just to post it with what is happening in the present world and where you stand. You should be able to draw a parallel line between what you, what you want to participate in and what you don't want to participate in. Because the Bible says that if your heart did not convict you, then you are not condemned. Because the Spirit of God will be a witness with you that you are doing the right thing. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The next one is envelop yourself in the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit. Envelop yourself in the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit. Always be prayerful. The Bible says pray without ceasing. It is written that men ought to pray and not to faint. By the time you make prayer a lifestyle, you discover that all these things that you are struggling with, try to be righteous, try to be... The Bible says that be in the spirit so that we, you don't have to fulfill the loss of the flesh. Let's look at, uh, J, let's look at uh, uh, J, uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. And it says, If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. I've, I've, met, uh, I've met several people who are saying that. Uh, I left smoking, I came back to eat. I left drinking, I came back to eat. They are struggling, they are struggling. If you purpose in your heart that you want to drop this aspect of your life and you cry to God, he will give you the spirit. He will back you up. But most times people are not sincere. They don't want to really live 
they don't want to really live that thing that they are doing. If you are, if you are sincere, you see that the Holy Spirit is real, and the Holy Spirit will help your infirmity. Praise the Lord. Let's look at James 4, verse 8. And the Bible says, Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your heart, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let's look at Jude 1, verse 20. The Bible says, But ye, beloved, building up yourself on your most holy feet, Pray in the Holy Ghost. Please, I enjoin us to live a life. Let's make prayer and fasting a lifestyle. By the time, because we are, we are kind of under surveillance, we, the children of God, the devil hates us with a passion. It is written that be sober and be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, moves to and fro, seeking whom to devour. The devil is not resting. If you listen to those who are former, formerly in his camp that have given their life to Christ, if you hear what they are revealing, it's very scary. But we have a God that is more than any other demon that is in hell. No matter the number of demons, if you are in Christ, Christ in me, hope of glory. We have a God that is bigger than any adversary. Praise the Lord. So, we are come to the end of uh, this session, and uh, I've read out all those principles. Let's try to imbibe on all those principles, and uh, the Lord will help us to be able to stand firm. And by the time we stand firm, we will not, we will not be tossed by any different type of ministration or doctrine. Everything that we lay our hand, it shall prosper for us, because it, uh, to serve God requires sacrifice. It's sacrifice. Come, uh, the, uh, Jesus Christ has enjoined us that he that wants to follow me should, car should, should carry his cross on a daily basis. Life of, life of Christian life is a life of sacrifice. God did not promise us heaven on earth here, but there will be. He said there will be tribulation. There will be. But be rest assured that because he has overcome the world, so shall you overcome the world also. Praise the Lord. So this is uh, the conclusion of uh, our message. Let's, uh, let's bow down our head while I, while I pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word that has come. I thank you because it is you that they hear and not me. And I believe in my heart that all the messages that have come will, will find expression in the life of your children in the name of Jesus Christ. My Father, my God, as we are leaving this place, Lord, we will go home well enriched. We will go home with an additional knowledge we we'll go home with understanding that, yes, we have been empowered. We have been impacted. And anything we touch, as for because as your word has come to us today, we shall, the greatness shall manifest in our life in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything we lay our hand shall prosper. And men shall see us because our light will so shine that they will glorify you. And our, our life will draw men unto you in the name of Jesus Father, my God, we thank you that as we continue in this race, we shall end well in the name of Jesus. When the saints are marching in, we shall not be found missing in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' marching name, we pray. Praise the Lord. It's offering time. So let's give out our offering. And as we do that, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. If you want to give online, 
You can give online, and then you can also give by getting the envelope and uh, putting your offering there. So shall it be in the name of Jesus, my Father, my God. I pray upon this offering for the po- from the pocket that it comes from. Father, Lord, refill their band and expand their coast in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as they are bringing it through, Lord, my Father, my God, make a way for them in the name of Jesus Christ. And at the end of the day, your name shall be glorified. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.